Okay, right now I want to move on. I want to move on. And as we all know, since he took over as Prime Minister in a carefully staged, managed and pre-planned transition of power purely for electoral uh, purposes from Jacinda Ardern, Chris Hipkins has rebanded himself or tried to rebrand Labour from woke to bloke. He is the guy that you want at the barbecue. He is about bread and butter issues. Many controversial policies have been parked rather than dropped or sent off to committees or sent off to some consideration. He's taken all the contentious cultural stuff or has tried to off the agenda. The most contentious of the government's policies, the one that was polling as the biggest concern to all New Zealanders, was Three Waters and its embracing of co-governance in the reform of our water infrastructure. Uh, the government ran under Nanaima Huta a completely misleading um, propaganda campaign. Nanaima Huta lied to local bodies about what input they would have and then sought to impose a, a level of management and ownership of our water assets in New Zealand that would take, leave the liabilities actually with local councils, but would effectively take all the control and vested in bodies that were in part selected or created based along lines of people's ethnicity. It's a wildly unpopular and contentious policy, which now no one in Labour will utter the word three waters. And in his speech on Tuesday, his first speech as Prime Minister, Chris Hipkins kind of skirted round it and is trying to create the impression that three waters isn't three waters anymore. The legislation's been passed. Is it going ahead or is it not? And what's really happening? Well, um, I think he's the, he's, the, he's the national spokesperson on this and he is relevant. Is uh, Chris Bishop, the MP, national MP for Hutt South. He joins us now. Chris, what's your shadow portfolio responsibility in regards to three waters? So I'm a uh, national infrastructure spokesperson. Infrastructure, um, right. So you're the guy. Well, you're the guy on this. Look, yeah, I... Yeah, well, we're working off both Bob and Watts, our local government guy, yeah. Yeah, OK. So what is your understanding of what has substantively changed in terms of the government's implementation of Three Waters? Well, good question. I mean, as you sort of uh, uh, said in the uh, uh, intro, Sean, We've had the shambolic process over the last few years. You know, Nanaima Mahuta has got almost every council in the country offside with her. They ran this misleading ad campaign. Uh, they've imposed this divisive agenda through co-governance uh, on the, the water entity. And they're confiscating the assets of local councils and putting them all into these big four uh, mega entities. Now, belatedly, Chris Hipkins, I think, has realised that this is a giant disaster. Um, and he has said, oh, well, we're going to refocus, whatever that means. Um, and, and yesterday, or on Tuesday, in the Prime Minister's State in the Parliament, he refused to even use the words three waters um, and just said, oh, it's water reforms or something like that. But So your guess is as good as mine as to what they will actually do. Um, and But it's, it's a big political problem for them. Has the legislation been rescinded? Has anything procedurally changed that would indicate that this plan isn't going ahead? No, the Water Service Entities Act passed into law last year. It's the one they put through under urgency where they had the entrenchment provision in, the one that tried to make it harder to yeah. repair. And I think we have uh, to accept that Nanaima, who'd have got together with the Greens and blindsided Jacinda Ardern and the government on that. Oh, 100%, yeah. It was it was a uh, collusion between Nanaima, Huda and the Greens uh, in relation to that, and she's never once uh, actually uh, accepted responsibility for it, and our, our view is that she should be sacked as a minister for it. But leaving that aside, the, there's a second piece of legislation that is before the select committee mm. right now that's uh, um, going through the select committee uh, process. But this is what they're trying to do, Sean. So Chris Sipkins is running this line that the government's changed, they're refocusing, it's bread and butter, all this propaganda and stuff like that. It's all fake. Right? It's all a pretend rebrand opportunity for the government. Three waters are still happening. It's legislated. The, the entities take effect on the 1st of July 2024. That's the law. There's nothing they can do about that unless they change the law. That is what happens. Uh, hate speech is still happening. It's just gone to a royal commission. It hasn't actually been killed. The jobs tax, the social insurance scheme that um, Labor um, you know, want to put in place, um, it's Grant Robertson's big dream. 
uh, they say that they've taken it off the table, but all they've actually done is pushed it out a year until 2024 rather than this year. Um, you know, about, about the only legitimate thing they've actually killed is the TVNZ, RNZ major, which no one wanted in the first place. And no. you to kill off them. Uh, but the sad thing is they wasted, you know, tens of millions of dollars on the way through trying to set it up. Yeah. So do you think Chris Hipkins is hoping if no one utters the word three waters, everyone think, will think it's gone away? It's like a con job or gaslighting. Yeah, I mean, uh, Chris Hipkins is trying to pretend that the government's refocusing, but the reality is um, you can change the leader and change the face, but it's the same Labour agenda uh, of centralisation, confiscation of assets. Uh, and a divisive co-governance agenda. And no amount of changing the name and using different language actually gets away from it. It's the same government. They're still spending a billion bucks extra uh, compared to five years ago uh, than than they were, uh, and uh, still taking 10,000 bucks a year extra off people in tax compared to five years ago. And it's still the government uh, that has uh, completely failed to deliver for New Zealand. And the sad reality is Chris Hipkins has been a big part of that. Chris Hipkins has been the Minister of Education that has seen declining truancy uh, or increase in truancy and declining standards in our schools. And he's responsible for the Polytech uh, merger that, you know, five years on still isn't actually in place and has been a d- disaster all the way through. Yeah. Um, uh, Chris, it would be fair to say, though, and I know you're a senior member of the National Party Caucus, it would be fair to say, though, that Labor, I mean, they've clearly got some good political consultants working for them, and on the face of it, on public mood, mainstream media reaction, their strategy is working. I don't know about that. I think the public see uh, what's going on quite cynically. I mean, we've, everyone's been distracted, quite rightly, by the very tragic events up on the East Coast and the, and the Hawke's Bay, uh, and quite rightly, the public attention for the last two or three weeks has been on the sides of Auckland and then the Cyclone Gabriel and, you know, normal politics has been suspended during that time and um, we've been trying to support the government and their response and making sure we've had people on the ground to support mm. support um, and support out those communities who are doing it very tough. Uh, and so we haven't wanted to politicise that and we've wanted to be constructive. And, you know, look, that, the reality is it's tough for oppositions in those circumstances yep. because opposition by definition is not the government. And, you know, Labor faced the same problem in the Christchurch earthquake and the events of Kaikoura in 2016 and things like that. So that, that's there's nothing we can do about that. Um, all we can do is, is try and support those communities. Um, but Parliament's back now. We've had our first real sitting week of Parliament uh, this week. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Parliament will continue to sit for the rest of the year until the election, and uh, it's a real opportunity for us to hold the government to account, but also start to lay out our own agenda uh, for uh, government if we have the privilege of being elected on October 14, and so that's what you're going to see much more of in the next few weeks and months. All right. Are you an arts... Are you a culture vulture, Chris? Uh, Well, it depends what you mean by culture. I mean, do I go to the opera? No. Do I go and see... She Hard and the Beths and um, bands like Miss June. Yeah, so does that make me a culture vulture, I suppose, maybe? Okay, you read any poetry? Do you... <laughs> I'm not a great poetry reader, um, but why do you ask? Because um, later this month there will be a performance at the almost entirely publicly funded Auckland Arts Festival that will include a dramatic interpretation by some poetry by a woman called Tusiata Avia, who is a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit, believe it or not. This is funded by the Foundation North, which is a government-run charitable foundation, and and, uh, Stuff published this first, and we have published it today. Um, And if I wouldn't mind, just as a person in New Zealand, and because it involves government funding, I, I want to read an extract from the poem which is about the 250th anniversary of James Cook's arrival in New Zealand. And this woman, Tusiata Avia, as I said, member of the New Zealand Order of Merit, has written this. And, hey, James, it's us. These days we're driving around in SUVs looking for you, or white men like you, who might be thieves or rapists or kidnappers or murderers. Yeah, or any of your descendants any of your incarnations, because you know, a hey, bitch, we're going to fuck you up tonight, James. It's me, Lani, Danielle, and a car full of brown girls. We find you on the corner of the Justice Precinct. You've got another woman in a headlock, and I've got my father's pig hunting knife in my fist, 
and we're coming to get you. Right, well, it's, um, apparently it's art. Not, not and it's art almost well, totally you know, funded by government funds. Yes, well, uh, you know, I, I remember um, uh, that guy who, who made that very uh, disgraceful song about uh, John Key and his family members. Um, I'm trying to remember the guy's name, Tom Scott, I think. Yeah, name Tom is. Scott. Um, yeah, Tom Scott from uh, the Homebrew, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you know, everyone sort of um, seemed to defend that at the time as well. And yeah, it almost been like. Bit of, yeah. um, bit of, yeah, well, the patron of the run. Auckland Arts Festival is the, is the Governor General. The Minister of Finance appoints the members to Foundation North Charitable Trust, which does some great work. They're appointed by the Minister of Finance and they're run by the Department of Internal Affairs. So that is, and that isn't the worst of it, of the poem, of the art. Um, we're paying for that. Would we pay for that under a national government? Will we promote that sort of art under a national government, do you think, Chris? Well, look, I'm not our art spokesperson and we'll have a, uh, an art policy uh, and culture policy, no doubt. But, um, you know, look, uh, at, a, at a time of uh, great hardship for many New Zealanders, um, you know, and the government itself says they're doing a reprioritisation exercise. Um, you know, I wouldn't have thought that would be the first port of call for, for government money, but... Um, not for me to say, uh, Sean. Uh, I don't want to venture um, you. Okay, no, politics. don't uh, talk as a politician. Talk as a New Zealander. Do you think that? Do you think it's hate speech, Chris? <laughs> I don't, well, I'm a believer in free speech. I, and so am I. The idea that, that, and so am I. I'm not a believer in the idea that, that that you know we should shut speech down. We don't agree with. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the bar for that got to be bloody high, frankly. Yeah. And um, that's one of the reasons why. I, I that, no matter how <laughs> how high the bar is, I think that. <laughs> that gets there somehow. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't agree with it. It's pretty edgy, obviously. Don't agree with it. But, um, you know, uh, uh, it's just the issue, I suppose, of government money funding that sort of stuff. So, yeah, people have different views. Yeah. Chris, um, so Three Waters, you're telling us, uh, hasn't gone away. <laughs> They're just rebranding it. And there is absolutely nothing that has had happened procedurally or legislatively that is stopping Three Waters or its co-governance? No, it's law. It's been legislated. It's, it's the Water Services Entities Act is law. You can go to the legislation website and look it up. The entities start on the 1st of July 2024, 50-50 co-governance over the top, uh, confiscation of the council assets. It's, it's the law. Okay. Uh, so how has Kat Hipkins pulled its ass? Has he, has he got Willie and the Maori caucus to say, we won't dump it, but let's just not talk about it? Well, of course, Sean, the rumour around Wellington is that, um, you know, to sort of get the leadership, we, we had this arrangement with the Maori caucus around Three Waters and the Nine Mahuta and Willie Jackson. I mean, Willie Jackson uh, is one of the most incompetent ministers in the government, and he got promoted to the front bench. I mean, having having overseen the TVNZ, RNZ debacle uh, and insulted Jack Tame uh, and TVNZ uh, in that infamous Q&A interview at the end of last year, Somehow, um, in, in Labor's world, that's enough to get you promoted onto the front bench. It's totally bizarre. And, of course, the other one um, doing the rounds that Simeon Brown asked um, <laughs> Michael Wood in Parliament yesterday was whether or not uh, Auckland's obsession, uh, Labor's obsession with Auckland Light Rail, uh, which is Michael Wood's pet project, was a, uh, a part of the leadership transition so that Michael Wood wouldn't run for the Labor leadership. Simeon Brown actually asked that to Michael Wood in Parliament yesterday. He just didn't look very happy about it. Uh, so, you know, I think there's a, there's a strong uh, likelihood that that's exactly what happened. All right. Um, what do you think about what happened to Maureen Pugh this week? Oh, look, Maureen, Maureen made a mistake. She, she, look, she, what, she by express, you said you're into free speech. She just expressed her opinion in a portfolio area she wasn't responsible for. Yes, not, not the National Party view that climate change... No, um, well, I think she expressed it as a personal view, didn't she? View, didn't she? Yeah, but, but, you know, discipline's important in political parties, right? Where you have collective views as a political party. Um, you, you know that as well as I do. Uh, yeah. And it's the National Party's strong view is that man-made climate change or human-induced climate change is real, and we have to do something about it. And um, the, the, po the policy discussion is around what we do, not that, it actually, not that it's real. Uh, not that it's uh, okay, real. but it sounds like, it looks like she's been sent off to a re-education camp. She's been given books to read. Um, no, no, it's not, it's not quite like that. It's, it's, 
Maureen didn't express herself um, very clearly. Uh, she actually did say in the interview, um, if you read the full transcript, yeah. that she, she accepts them. You know, yeah, accepts, but um, of course, you know, mainstream like, media are going to hunt her down like a dog, aren't they? Because they don't well, like you guys. The, it was just the choice of language, and um, and she recognises that, and um, yeah. she, she's all good. Yeah. Right, but a good bit of chat and drink there last night, she's all good. Bish, I thank you for coming on and answering all those questions um, uh, frankly and honestly and to the best of your ability. If you're having a chat with your leader, Chris Luxon, could you ask him that, that we don't bite or kill and, and it might be useful if he came and talked to the, to the platform family I'm as sure, well? I'm, I'm sure he'll be on at some point, uh, Sean, um, and I uh, look forward to coming back on at some point myself. Good on you, Chris. Have a great day. Cheers. Chris Bishop, Nationals MP for Hutt South and their spokesperson on infrastructure. And Three Waters, it's still there. Chris just thinks if I don't talk about it, no one will worry about it. Cunning strategy. Cunning strategy, isn't it? And, oh, Chris, uh, he likes free speech. So do I. I love art. I love free speech. I don't like paying. For racist claptrap, though. Um, Sean, not a national voter, but Chris Bishop, I like the cut of his jib, one of the better national MPs who has been starting to shine through in the last few years. Future Prime Minister in the making, if you ask me. I wasn't, but Jesse, there you go.